Now, in case you've never heard of ESG before, it's kind of a, you can say, strange acronym. It stands for Environmental, Social, and Governance. And essentially, the way that ESG works in practice is that different publicly traded companies are given an ESG score based upon a slew of different metrics, such as how many minorities they have on their board, how many women they have, whether or not they align themselves with the LGBTQ agenda, whether they count the amount of carbon that they produce in their supply chain, and so on and so forth. There are a lot of different metrics. And using all these different metrics that are, again, based on things like diversity, equity, inclusion, and compliance with the so-called climate standards, a company is given an overall ESG score by an ESG rating agency, which in and of itself sounds innocuous, like a little side quest for a company to take. But it's not. These ESG scores have now morphed to actually determine how much investment capital a company can have access to. That's because many of the large institutional investors, they use these ESG scores as their metric for whether or not to invest in a particular company. So whereas before, in what you can call traditional investing strategies, you would just focus on getting the best financial return for your investors, but now, with this new ESG investing model, money is directed only to the companies that are essentially down with the program. 